Hello and welcome to another episode of the Podcast Friendly Fire. I'm your host, Nameless, joined alongside Study, and we got Dylan here today, attached, an absolute legend in the scene, a true vet. You seem like you're one of the younger players, but you're actually one of the old, longest lasting pros, one of the oldest, which is crazy because we were just talking about it. Bro, you do not age. You still look like you did oh God, when bro. I first heard of you in Ghost back in the day where you were trying to wall bang something that couldn't be wall bang. But <laughs> welcome, brother. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. I'm doing. I like the intro, by the way. The music that was getting me hyped when I listened to it. So the intro was dope. But uh, solid. I've been killing it with the show. So I appreciate you guys having me on. Hell yeah! You know, we only got the big names out here, D. You know we had to get <laughs> you names, on it, bro. You know what I'm saying? We were just talking about it though. That's crazy because you really do got the Pharrell gene, bro. Like you don't <laughs> age. Like I was just asking you, like, do you shave often? You might not even have to shave though, because you look nah, the same when we were 18 I, I years do, old. Bro. I do. I do got to shave. Insane, bro. Once every like you know three four days, or just depending on what I'm doing, because it it grows in, but it just doesn't look good. So I had to like so, clean it up a little bit. How, how long you think you're gonna be rocking this baby face look, man? Like how long you think this is gonna last you, bro? Because it don't last for a long time, man. Um, until it, the hair starts looking good. So I don't know. <laughs> it, it grows in patchy a little bit. Grows a little yeah, bit patchy. It grows, grows in, but it's like. It's just hair, like I, it just doesn't look right. It's so. all good. Jay's grows in patchy too. Yeah, so. yeah. Don't worry about it, bro. But I'm a dad now, so it's starting to grow a little bit oh, better. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah so. You got the, you got them new jeans. Yes, Hell yeah. Sir. So, Dill, uh, first off, I want to ask you. It's been a pretty crazy season, uh, obviously to this point, though. Like you guys made it into champs. Uh, how you feeling, man? Overall, like it's probably been. Would you say this has been like the wildest season for you as a competitor? Yeah, definitely the most up and down season because, uh, I mean, we started off the year pretty well at like stage one. We went like three and one. Mm -hmm. Stage one, we we choked for like top six or something. But then we went to stage two, got top three, choked like a five three lead to get to grand finals. And then uh, the stage three happened where we went 0 and five online, then they got rounded and lost to LAT uh, at major three. So then that's when I got benched after that. Mm -hmm. Team played a little bit more, then I got brought back onto the roster, and now the stuff that transpired the past two so, weeks happened. So it's just been so up and down, up and down. Uh, but yeah, it's it's the fun of it. So there you go, guys. That's the cliff notes. But we're gonna unpack basically <laughs> all of this. So I want to rewind, Dill, to the start of the year. Uh, so obviously at the end of last season, didn't go how you wanted it to, right? You guys missed champs. Uh, and then you and the Minnesota Rocker, like you guys go into the lab, bro. You guys cook some up and you come up with this new roster. Um, was this like the first option, like the roster you guys had coming into the season? Was that like exactly what you wanted? Like, how did that all go down? I feel like I never heard this story. Maybe you told it, but forgive me. I, I don't know, uh, how that whole situation happened. Yeah, so the off season was pretty crazy. I was in Hawaii dealing with it all, and it was kind of perfect. Great place. Like, the time zone was a couple hours behind even PST. Mm -hmm. So when it was like eight nine a.m., roster menu would start popping off already. So I'd just be on the phone with different teams, different players, and uh, trying to figure stuff out. So, uh, but I did want to stay in Rocker if possible, because I mean Rocker's a great org; they take great care of us. So I wanted to build a team here, mm -hmm. and um, I've, of course talking to Afro because he was a really sought after free agent talking to uh cammy as well because he was on toronto but um he i think he knew he was getting replaced because like scrappy was essentially taking his spot yeah, uh, yeah on the roster so i really wanted to team with them and of course ben and cam have like really good chemistry they've teamed together i think like four years now so yeah. we kind of just had like those three and then ben was down and wanted to play with us as well so then we got bants but i was in talks with, like a lot of different orgs and teams and players um but i was really happy we can get like this team right here. The people I was in talks with a lot that I didn't get the team with would probably be like Slasher and Hydra. Those are like the really? people I was like mm. talking a lot to last off season, but then how stuff all worked out. Uh, Austin got the phase offer. We made our Minnesota team and then Hydra just went to New York after. Was there ever like a discussion with Minnesota as like you were gonna be like their franchise player? Was that like a thing in the off season? Or was it more so just you guys trying to find teammates? Uh, it wasn't really anything like that. Like I'm going to be a franchise player or anything. Um, I think I kind of just knew that they wanted to keep me yeah. from the last season moving mm -hmm. forward. So it, it kind of feels like a franchise in a way, but it was just, they just made me the lead GM and I, <laughs> I, I was helping making all the decisions with the roster and stuff. Um, 
yeah, I mean, Minnesota is a great org, so I wanted to be here. They wanted me as well. Yeah. And uh, it's it's been a pretty I mean, crazy couple of years. I mean, to be honest, the roster looked incredible on paper. Like, if I was you, I would have built the same exact team. Like, you got nasty, like, duo from another team that's been super successful and an up-and-coming SMG. Um, yeah. I have, a, like, I wanted to talk about, like, sort of the identity of the team. You Like, I felt like when you guys made the team, it was supposed to be, like, a 2-3-5 roster, and you guys would work on, like, hard point as the season went on. Um, obviously, search was a big struggle, and that is so surprising because, in my opinion, for my playing days, you were one of the best search players and one of the hardest to play against by far yep. in that game yep. mode. Um, what do you think that is? Do you think it's just, like, the game, like, MW2 and the way it plays? Like, obviously, you guys are better at it now, so... Um, what do you think it came down to the struggles in S and D for majority of the early season? Yeah. Before major one, like the online stage, we were like playing S and D really well. Mm -hmm. A lot of people would have had us like in one of the top S and D teams. But then, mm -hmm. um, after that, we kind of just fell off in the mode. Um, I was kind of like the way you have to play this map or this, this search in this game. It's like you go somewhere, you post up, you kind of throw a trophy and you really can't make too many plays as an AR. Yeah. That's, yeah. There's not really the S and D play style I'm used to. Like I would use an AR sometimes in other games or a sub. I would kind of just be like flexible, where like I, could, I have a strat where I hit something out. I have a strat where I just play a late pinch or something. But mm -hmm. um, I was kind of just the like do like the not the dirty work because I wouldn't take the bomb, but mm -hmm. kind of just post up somewhere, get some info, and then like give some comms and let my teammates react to that. Like Ben and marcus or afro and bance they were like the playmakers going for those first bloods and yeah stuff. and then yeah. cammy was working with them so i was on an island a lot kind of just posting up with the trophy and um early on we had success but then once we stopped getting those first bloods our like teamwork like our strategy to like yep. bomb down you look over here look you over here just wasn't too good so like we were just kind of getting exposed ver with versus other teams that had better teamwork and search and um yeah once we stopped getting those first bloods it was hurting us yeah, I, I obviously commented you guys' games, and that's always something that I always watch out for, because, like, in the beginning, like, during Major 1, during Major 2, and 3v4s, you guys were the worst team. Like, you guys had the worst win percentage in that situation. It's like, once you guys first play a drop, you guys had no strategy on from that. Oh, it was all well, no daddy. Childs, and if you lose those childs, then it would not go your way. Um, For you, like, a guy who has always played Search and Destroy, like, so many different titles, so you have so many different play styles in it. Were you ever in a situation where you were just like, yo, like, I know you guys want me to do this. I'm very uncomfortable, though, and this is probably why, like, we're struggling. Like, did you ever make that call for yourself? Uh, well, I remember after the first stage uh, and, like, the major one, Cam came back, and he had, like, a really rough stage in S&D, and he was kind of, like, losing fool. Yeah. Yeah, oh, like, we, got, we, get, we like, I, I just don't feel comfortable doing this, and we should, like, and we try to, like, get him into spots where he felt really comfortable playing yeah because i mean he's been like a, a really good search and destroy player and he knows how to work with like bands really well too and he they know how like each other like to play search mm -hmm. so um i kind of was just doing like whatever i needed to do whether it's go on hotel go sit p4 post up if it's on ls Lo, just play one of the hours of the map like i would just kind of do just whatever was needed yeah uh, for the team and just kind of like post up and uh with the trophy you just can't do too much you can't do anything no it's like you yeah. literally you, you can't do it because you're not dead bro online. and at Especially that time online. yeah people oh, yeah. were they had no remorse with the sound eq during yeah, that yeah. time yeah. um but yeah i feel like everybody kind of gets that point in their career where they're just like willing to just like take the back seat like for their teammates so they can enable them and you feel like you can do that better than other people because you've been playing for so long right so it was just natural for you to kind of be like i'll take the back seat how's that role been sort of being like the gap filler on this team like trying to cater to different play styles and and uh i guess different formulas of teams like has that been weird for you at all because you've usually been one of the aggressive smgs yep. up until vanguard like you were one of the guys that was playmaking right so you've had to completely revamp your play style and i feel like it's something that people have not talked about at all mm -hmm. not many people can do that and still remain and play at a high level so talk me through that process a little bit especially in this game now being year two new role yeah, it's uh, it's definitely different with each team. Like sometimes, mm -hmm. depending on the roster, you're gonna be the one making plays a lot more often. Other times, you're not. Um, so I know, like last year, a lot. Even though I was used, like I would, I was like the flex. I would use a sub on like the small, like bulkage. But then I use AR on pretty much every other map. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
and then like, our team didn't find that much success last year so i was just like i got some pretty nasty teammates i mean afro but you were really frying though dill you were frying last oh, yeah. year when you switched yeah, yeah. you put up the numbers but it was different yeah, right I, because I, it wasn't true like vanguard. ar gameplay because it was just like aggressive yeah, I, like that game was dead yeah i miss i miss vanguard because like <laughs> with the auto you could just slide you could like slide cancel and chop yeah. people, and it, it felt so good with the tag mm -hmm. you kind of have to like just be preamped up but mm -hmm. um Back on point, like I was just um, had really good teammates like Afro, super talented player, Cami, mm -hmm. one of the best flexes in the game, Bance, one of the most or the most successful European player. Yeah. So I kind of just wanted to enable them, like the two younger superstars on the team, mm -hmm. uh, to just do whatever they got to do and play, just be well rounded as a team. And it is tough because not only are you like switching roles and playing a new play style, it's a whole new game too. So you have to figure out how the game is played and what you need to do. Yeah. So it's like, this is one of the weird ones that you see in control where like on hotel control, you might see someone have like a 10 and 10 stat line while everyone else has tons of engagements because they're just mm -hmm. sitting on blocking uh, bed. They're blocking bed, playing yep. that side on defense. Yep. And uh, it's all about learning the new game. And I was just doing kind of what I was told slash what I thought was best for the team to just get us to win. Um, and it worked for a little bit. Then he also, also saw the times when like everything was off and we needed to figure something else out. You know, Dude, do you think it's a, hold on, hold on. Do you think it's a, do you think it's an age thing for like the people who come in as SMGs and then as they get older, they switch to AR because obviously you're one of those guys. Doug said, so Martin just made the switch. Is it like, is it an age thing? Like, all right, my reaction time isn't as fast as it used to be. Let me pull out the AR. I want to hear your reply to this because I got to take a hot take on this one. I don't, I'm not so much convince it it's an age thing mm -hmm. i think maybe when you get older you start seeing the game a little bit differently mm -hmm. and like you could go rogue and make rogue plays but when you're older i feel like you don't make as many rogue plays as an smg yeah. you, you, yeah. you kind of know like oh shit, if i do this i might i'm kind of fucking up the spawns and stuff but when mm -hmm. you're young it's kind of like you don't really understand that too well yeah but it doesn't matter because you're getting the bailout two piece the bailout three piece and you let your teammates figure that out just because mm -hmm. you're the one that has all the talent to make plays like that but of yeah. course you still want to like learn and make you don't want to make dumb plays all the time mm -hmm. but i think you kind of get a little more conscious of it as time goes on but i don't think age plays like too big of a factor i think it's more like dedication to the game instead of like age that i feel I like think. as you get older you just maybe like think a little bit more and like in those situations like you got to turn your brain off sometimes like when you're younger you could just be like screw it like this is the play to make and then you reflect on it and be like oh that was bad right so it's maybe <laughs> not even like a full understanding sometimes when you're younger yeah. it's just like you could just make the decision fast but also yeah. like you just become like in your position i feel like as you get older and you're a veteran you're confident in your skill and you know what you bring to the table you're just comfortable mm -hmm. with taking a back seat I think a lot of older players are willing to do that. That's why Scump, like, if Scump wanted to keep playing with an AR, he could have kept playing with AR. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even with a sub. Um, yeah, he's playing well with a sub, too. Wait, so, Dill, wait, wait. One more question. One, one more follow-up. Oh, since you've <laughs> ran both now, since you ran the SMG and now you run the AR, what do you like more? Like, what gives you that, that fight a little bit more? Like, what gives you more mm. exciting? Oh, that's a tough one to say because like, like when you have a sub and everything's just going your way and you're able to just run around and make plays yeah, you're in flow, like the flow state that's yeah. what they call it nowadays yeah. yeah you're in flow state everything's going your way you're hitting all your timings and you're just getting the freest kills shooting people mm -hmm. in the back gunning people off headies and you know they're losing full because they're just running around the sub in their base mm -hmm. um so i think running a sub is more fun for sure i think it's, it's running a sub is more fun <laughs> but i do like an ar where it's kind of like the do it all gun where you can just do whatever you want so you can still yeah. like kind of chow make plays and stuff like that but i think i think running a sub is definitely or using right. a sub is more fun so you've Dale been come back. so Dill, what's harder though is it harder to be an ar when your subs are getting fried or vice versa <laughs> when when you're a sub and your ars are getting fried which one is which uh, one feels worse <laughs> i think nah. in this game in particular i think it's definitely when you're when your subs are getting fried and you don't map control, it's harder to be an AR. Because mm -hmm. I mean, a Vaznev is running around in your face, in your base, and you cannot kill a Vaznev up close consistently with attack. Like, you shouldn't be able to, but it's just hard. It's so hard to do. Mm -hmm. I think it's definitely harder when your subs are getting fried. Because even if your airs are frying sometimes, it depends who they're killing. They're, yeah. sub, the subs still might be running. Like, if they're in your art, you're not running in there with attack and killing them. You need your yeah, subs no to way. kill them. Yeah, unless yeah, you yeah. just world star them and they miss. But more often than not, you're not killing that Vaznev up close in your art with attack. So the worst situation has to be like, like a CeeLo when they're like your bottom gym, bro. Oh, 
or like or like when they're side white and pushed up yellow it's like oh my god this, yeah. this is horrific because you can't over the half yeah, ball and shit you're over here checking your corner they jump and he's in the other corner you don't check bro yeah. stun they coming off spawn like he's he got the back button pulled up dashboard yeah. and everything that's, it's, it's <laughs> to that it's point tough. though dill like i feel like uh i remember when you got released from your team and you were talking about how like Certain people were talking about your stats. I read it, stuff like that. You were bringing up some really good points, man. And I appreciated you talking about that. Like situations on the map that maybe fans weren't noticing or like how ARs play in this game. Like it was something that was really important for people to hear. Um, and so for you, when you ended up getting released, like how did you process all that? Like, were you considering challengers or other teams? Like how was that period uh, of time for you? Uh, yeah, that period of time was tough. I It was like, what? halfway point of the season mm -hmm. so i didn't really want to go play challengers uh because i was just sound eq uh host fucking <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then, you also, then you also i don't think there was a challengers event for major four so i would have been playing online and then there only would have been a major five one and then a champs one if i were to qualify or whatever so i was like i just didn't think i needed to play challengers either i was like mm -hmm. i'm like i'm attached like i'm gonna get an opportunity again Thanks. so i wasn't really too worried about that um and then I just kind of streamed every day. I was like, oh, well, I'm not just going to sit here and stare at the wall. Like, I'm just going to, I just streamed every day. I do some watch parties, watch all the matches just to kind of like stay on point, at least keep the reflexes going. Um, I peeped it. Yep. What, what was the second part of the question? Uh, I was just asking, like, how was that period of time for you? Like, oh, did okay. you consider any other teams or challengers? Like, oh, yeah, what I'm getting at is like during this yeah. time, because I remember you got released. There wasn't like rumors of you joining another team or anything like that. Yeah. And it looked like because of how like, Bad, the previous rocket team was it looked like you were just going to kind of be in limbo the rest of the season so i'm wondering like in alternate universe was there a situation where you, a either you retired because you started to grind a lot or b you joined a challenger squad slash another team like what were the yeah. options during that time did you go through any of this or were you on autopilot no I, yeah i went through all the scenarios like i said i wasn't going to do challengers um joining another team was probably impossible unless i just yeah joined like because only teams are going to be able to join are like the ones that are doing bad so mm -hmm. that would have been like vegas or florida or anything which just isn't even worth it you had no um, options yeah yeah because like i knew my own my only real option to get back into the like the league and stuff was if rocker does bad i get brought back in that was like my yeah. only real option because like mid-season trades especially with how big the contracts are now and how buyouts and trades work it's so difficult in the middle of the season that's why it's so rare to actually see player go from one team to another in the middle of the season unless they like become an unrestricted free agent because if i was an unrestricted free agent like i could have joined another team probably for sure but since i was under contract like there was just no way it was just going to be able to happen so i i, I said that. i was like i'm either going to get back on rocker or i'm just going to join a team in the off season and that'll be when i start competing again luckily i was able to get back on rocker though so no so retirement never, no retirement no, Oh, no, retirement I mean, was out the window uh, yeah, yeah retirement and challengers i just knew like i weren't i wasn't doing either of those i was just saying because so, i saw you streaming and i'm like i don't know man i remember mentioning, i was like dill might be headed to the home brothers he <laughs> might be, yeah, he might be. i don't know what's going on go ahead jay no nah, that's good that you never thought about retirement yeah. though man because you always got to stay locked in as a competitor you know mm -hmm. you just got yeah. dropped this season you gotta you gotta redeem yourself so it's good the, the fact that you were able to stay locked in and that's actually the next question i was gonna ask you is how did you stay locked in like because you got dropped at the end of major three. You go through all major four, major four, I mean, major five qualifiers. You jump in for the last two matches. How did you stay ready in these moments for a guy that didn't play challenge? Yeah, good question. Like, how, how did you stay ready? Dude, I'm not going to lie. All I did was play rank play and then watch. Oh, it was dead, was bro. With the Yakta Demons. Yeah, you was yeah, out there with the Yakta Demons. I was playing the best players in the world. They're the all knowing. <laughs> they, they know they're pre firing you every life, they're spin bonding you. It was crazy <laughs> playing rank. But I was, I, I told my stream the other day, I was like, guys, that's messed up. I was playing rank play for eight to 10 hours a day. I was like, I think 15th in the world when I was like on my grind mm -hmm. and no one even like checked on my mental health. Like that's not <laughs> normal to play rank play for that many hours versus hackers and stuff. Yo, but I mean, bro. I just, at the end of the day, I'm always, I'm, I'm just a hustler. So I'm going to go do, I'm going to go do something. I'm not just going to ever sit on my ass and do nothing. So mm -hmm. I was like, well, can't scrim. So I'm just going to stream all day, play some rank play. And that's what we were doing. We we're having a lot of fun on Twitch. Uh, the stream was doing really well. You're killing it, bro. That was just, that was just Keeping me busy in the meantime until I got back into the league because I knew everything was going to work out. 
Yeah, Dill, honestly, like you've been inspiring all these years of COD, man. You've always grinded yeah. the content, you've always put in work, and you've never like, I don't know, you've never like talked shit. Like you've just done your thing and just focused and it's always respectful and you always bounce back. So very impressed, just wanna give you kudos for that. I appreciate that, I appreciate um, that. So through the grind, retirement wasn't an option. There are other teams were an option, so you're waiting. So Rocker obviously does not have success. Very, very tough. Uh, they're fighting to make it into champs. And then you get the call up like, all right, we're bringing you back in, Dill. Like, like mid-stage, bro. <laughs> mid-stage. Yeah. Got the three who, mad stage. First of all, yeah. Dill, yeah. who called you and were you expecting that call? Um, A little bit because I was talking to Looney after the um, – the Rocker Home Series, where they played London, I think. And Boston. Yeah, and London Boston. and Boston. They, they lost to Boston. They lost to Boston, They lost to Boston, like, all mm -hmm. the respawns. And um, then I talked to Dan. And I know Cammy, Looney, and our our analyst, Alex, got into, like, a little car crash. What? The night before the matches. Damn. Yeah, they got, like, rear-ended and stuff. So Cam, like, of course, was a little shook up. Wasn't, like, feeling like himself for the whole home series so they didn't want to just be like all right you guys went one and one of the home series we're making a change when yeah. that had happened you know because that mm -hmm. that just like messes things up but they pretty much said dan told me he's like listen if we get smoked versus vegas um you're back in and then i was watching the vegas match i think rocker was up 2-1 they're up on embassy hardpoint they were up by like 60 or 70 after the p5 uh first rotation mm -hmm. and then vegas comes back beats them and then beats them like 6-2 game game five and then rocker has just wasn't winning hard points when i wasn't mm -hmm. on the team versus like they won a couple throughout when they've been a team but like they were on a really big hard point losing streak except for beating like london <laughs> that's like the only yes, that was it. In yeah. hard point. so like they were losing versus everyone else in hard points and like their s d definitely improved a little bit yeah fame was good at that mode their Same. respawn just like wasn't it so yeah. i told dan i was like yo dan like listen after las vegas i like texted him i'm like listen i'm kidding you at least one hard point versus <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, he's not wrong he was, just he was losing full because of like the whole loss and everything and then he's mm -hmm. like yeah i'm serious like i'm gonna bring you back and that's i had to do some other stuff i can't really say too much of what i was doing but uh for a couple days but then it happened on like the tuesday when like i got announced Mm -hmm. I was talking, I was talking with uh, Looney and then Brian Saint too. And we were like figuring out like what the roster is going to be. And we know we couldn't make too much of a change because yeah. on Friday we played LAT. So we need to be like game ready and kind of be ready. Plan. Yeah, yeah. We, need like, go. we need to be ready to we, go. We, like, we don't have time to build chemistry or anything yep. like that. We just have to like get on and click and be perfect. So we ended up deciding on... Um, Vance fame switch fame from AR to an SMG, mm -hmm. which was he was running in challengers, which was a big criticism that rocker got a lot because he was running a sub like 75, 80% of challengers mm -hmm. this season. And then he joined the team and became an AR. What so, are your thoughts on that? Why did they do that? Um, that's just what the, it was team the old and, formula. Like, management want to do. Like that's just what, yeah, that's yeah. Just what that's management what, like, makes that. I mean, not, not, I love well, Looney. I love saying, not like but like, like, like coaching coach, they make those decisions like roles and shit. Um, like, yeah, bro, you was running a sub, all challenges, bro. But I, I need Dill, 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 Dill. Talk to me. Like, Dill, Dill, listen. You, Dill, listen. You know me. No we competed against each other. You know me. I know you. <laughs> you telling me a coach going to tell you what gun you're going to run, <laughs> Dill? Because if I walk in a room and a coach tried to tell me what gun I'm about to run, uh, it's it's going crazy. Uh, nah, There's nah, no nah, shot. Nah. I think it was more like... I just had that stigma around my name and then the players mm -hmm. were like, oh, fuck it. Attach, plain, slow, blah, blah, blah. Whatever. No, I'm not talking yeah, about yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about they told Fame what gun he was going to run. That's crazy, yeah, well, bro. When you're, when you're like a challenger's player, if you get an opportunity, you're going to take yeah, it. Yeah, you just got to, you got to, like, yep. If yeah, but you got to throw the, you got to throw out the feeler like, yo, listen, guys, like, we just got fried <laughs> in this scrim, like, <laughs> I'm telling you, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's just crazy <laughs> yeah. to me. But anyway, so you guys controversially decide to bench Afro um which has worked out wonderfully but i'll be honest at the time i was mind blown because like mm -hmm. afro is seemed like he seemed like the guy in the team that was like untouchable you know what i'm saying um yeah. so um what went down with that did you guys just think you'd have a little bit more structure without him which you do now but uh how did you guys notice that and make that decision at the time well uh when i wasn't on the team and for that stage and a half i think cammy and uh fame were actually had like, like playing 
the two best like overall and mm -hmm. then ben or bands and afro were struggling mm -hmm. during that that time so it was kind of like both the subs are struggling both ars are doing like decent what's going on here and i think there was just some internal issues when i wasn't there i don't even know mm -hmm. exactly what happened um but there was just some stuff that the chemistry was off yeah. between the team the smg duo and bands started playing well at the beginning of the stage five qualifiers you know 1.1 was playing well i don't think marcus was playing that well if i remember correctly and then that's when they're just like i right. um because i joined the call and they're just like all right like they, they, they have been talking about what sub to keep, Bance or Afro. And I joined the call and they're like, oh, yeah, we think we should keep Bance. So I was just like, I'm like, I can't really join and be like, nah, I don't want to do this. Yeah, whatever, you can't whatever, say that, yeah. Like, I haven't been there for a month and a half, so I don't know what the fuck <laughs> yeah, happened yeah, yeah. Behind, behind closed doors. Um, but that, yeah, that's kind of just what happened. There's like, yeah, we're keeping Bance, and then we can figure out the rest of the roster from there. D, hmm. what was the difference between, like, when you were teaming with the original squad in the beginning to now with fame as a sub and you jumping back in the lineup like because obviously afro and bands at major two they were like one of the best strategies oh, in yeah. the game you yeah, know what i'm saying and then crazy. like you go a little bit forward now you're back on the lineup and your smg duo has now changed so what's changed in the gameplay for you guys like what makes the game look a little bit more different because you guys are a lot better in hard point you guys are a lot more consistent in your controls and your search and destroys like what's better with this dynamic of the roster with this dynamic, I just feel like there's more teamwork, teamwork, communication. We can even feel it after the first couple of days we started scrimming, like we mm -hmm. were holding setups, we were getting good breaks. And like, yes, you can practice that and get better at it over time, but it kind of just felt like it clicked in a way where like, yo, I got this for you, look here. And it was just working. Like yeah. we, were holding, we were locking down hills. And with our other team, it was like, if we weren't getting our kills, we weren't holding. If we were getting our kills, we were holding, but there wasn't that much teamwork to a point. I feel like there was just more, uh communication and teamwork with this roster and uh, that could be for a lot of reasons but i think this roster just it, it, it gels a little bit better yeah, what man. is it like uh playing with the rookie in fame because i feel like ever since he's entered your guys lineup obviously he's done it in multiple roles now but one thing that stays strong in his gameplay has always been his search and destroy which he's is nasty. what the minnesota rocker have been lacking and what does he bring to your guys team in that mode because i feel like he looks like a guy that's shot calling in certain situations or just making plays happen for your team with that young man confidence because he's still very young man yeah you know if kev is a great player because he's he's confident but he's like a sponge like whatever he's wherever you tell him he's gonna listen he's also really smart at the game too and he has great comms he doesn't really complain like he's overall just great teammate i have nothing bad to say about him and um he knows how to make plays too like he knows how to get map control make plays risk his life a little bit he doesn't do it to the point where it's like gonna throw the game away yeah like he, he doesn't take dumb risks calculated yeah he's very calculated with the plays he makes and then that just makes working with him a lot easier because you could tell him to do something you have this and then he knows his job or he'll tell you to look look at this for him and while he goes and makes a play and you know like he's gonna do his best to get a kill stay alive play his life like he's not just gonna get a kill keep going throw his life away like he's just a very intelligent player especially when it's like after that you get the first blood and you're in their base and that helps and the, you as an ar yeah. oh yeah for sure helps us like get map control it helps us like pinpoint where the other any other the other team is on the map so you kind of just like it's like a process of elimination oh i got this i don't we don't see him here they're probably over here and then yeah. like he just he's just a really good player when he's confident making plays there is some times where he can like kind of just chill it doesn't make plays but yeah when he's like making plays and doing his thing he's really good well that's where you guys come into the vets right to be like no mm -hmm. kev go ahead you got the green light and i i, yeah. I think the moment that's that i, I became I first joined yeah i feel like the moment that i became a believer in fame it always takes me a while when i watch these guys play when they're rookies <laughs> but it was the game five versus boston i think it was the, was that hotel right yeah. and yep. he yeah. dude the way that he played that map was was wonderful bro like he was getting kills Damn. like the round where he got the kill a bomb or not even a kill yet he pushed all the way up to corner d1 oh, yeah. and just dude like literally waited round. the whole yeah, round time mm -hmm. but like prior to that he had been making plays like he was winning mm -hmm. his gunfights oh, yeah. but like 15, yeah, like 15. Uh, bro yeah, bro yeah, no joke there wasn't a single round where he threw his life away in, in that yeah. game and i was like i watched that i was like all right fame is the real deal i remember jay we were on the flank we were watching that yeah right? yeah you guys owe me some cash now that we remind me of it <laughs> you ben and tom 20 canadian where's my cat i, I bet on attach 
I, yeah. It, for what? For, for who what? would get most, most kills. kills in the game five? Yeah, I started off well the game five, but then like, yeah. I kind of I ended up with like seven or something. Yeah, nah, he had fame 15, started popping you know? two around, but I was like, oh yeah, let's get it, Rook. Yeah, so he had 15, um, so he was popping off. So at least me. So we got through all the tough spots this year. Let's talk about now. We talked about your team and your guys' dynamics. So let's talk about major five. Uh, major five obviously there was one goal in mind and that was to make it into champs to make as deep yeah. of a run as you guys could um obviously and try to win the whole thing but you guys had a crazy round one matchup versus boston a team that has given rocker trouble in the past um mm -hmm. you win that three two then you have florida you win that three oh at this point you guys are going up against atlanta uh and you've you uh were you guys Locked into champs when when you yeah, got yeah, to winners finals. Once we yeah. beat Boston, we were locked in. Yeah, um, they were top Once three. we beat Florida, that was like Florida was like the seeding match to get our seed. Mm -hmm. But once we yeah. beat Boston, we were locked in at champs. So, Dill, uh, what is it going to take for you guys to get over the hump of the top top teams? Like the the phases. Yeah. Obviously, those are two finalists you guys lost to, and they've been together yeah. the whole year. So it's yeah, going to be difficult. Yeah. So what what is it going to take to get to that next level? Now that you have a good foundation. Yeah, it's just building on what we've learned so far. Like, I mean, our hard point was pretty good. Uh, we, we were like, until that point, we we're like seven and zero in the game. Yeah, but, yeah, you guys um, are frying. Our control is what actually was costing us really bad. I think our control, we started getting good at it now because like we've went a little more in depth with it. Like, what do mm -hmm. we need to do? Where do we need to start making plays more? Where do we need to play our lives more and use more team? We used to be nasty and, at uh, that mode though. Yeah, like we, you yeah, guys, no, 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 Celo control was like you guys bread and butter, bro. Well, teams have gotten like better. It's like it's falling off a little bit, and that's what makes yeah. you guys shake a little bit in control. Yeah, that was the one thing I would say with the switch of fame to a sub was getting used to it on a, a Celo control in specific. But mm -hmm. recently we've been playing it and like our controls actually all across all math has been looking really good. So like we kind of are hard focusing on control and search because like we know our hard point still needs to improve, but mm -hmm. it's decent enough to where like we need to get our SD and control better. And if we do get yeah. those to where our hard point was, like we can definitely make a run, a deep run. But um, make, in that tournament, like when we beat, because we beat LAT, beat Ultra in the state, in the first two matches when we were a team online. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't think anyone had us beating those teams. We played- No, no way. Good, bro. Yeah, Still no way. We played, we played Florida for top three, we beat Florida 3-0. And then we're like, yeah, I was like, dude, holy shit. Like, can we lose? <laughs> <laughs> I take a month and a half off from scrims. Fame uh, has run an AR. Now he just switched to a sub after a month and a half. I was yeah. like, bro, like, how good are we? But then we got slammed versus uh, Faze in New York. And I was just like, like it sucked. And oh. it, was, it was sad, but it was like, if we would have won that tournament, that would just have been like the craziest thing ever. It would have been like... Mm -hmm. You have to work hard for things in life. Yeah, you, can't just, you can't just take a break and come back and just be the best fucking team nah, in, the you world, yeah, yeah. in the world. So I've been like, are we like God or something? Like, how did we just do that? So yeah, you can't expect you guys to win experience. that. Yeah, we were, it was a humbling experience because we got smoked. And I mean, I think FaZe and New York were the two best teams by far there. Oh, yeah. They made they, the they've final. been together yeah. the whole season. They've looked mm -hmm. great. So like, you just have to tip the cap and uh, learn from that going into champs. And we... What was... We got the job done of securing a six, the six seed, the highest we could get, and yeah. making it champs. So that's what we needed to go do. Of course, it would have been great to keep the run going, but we just weren't ready for that yet. And now we got to buckle down. Well, I mean, honestly, great situation, like top three, right? And then you guys uh, in a situation that, well, you played New York first round. We'll get into that in a minute. So you got yourself the nice gift of that match. But uh, for you, I saw a stat, Dill. It was like you have top eight most top three finishes or something like that or in a season which is very impressive uh you come back and you get that um what do you think has given you the ability to play for this long we we were gonna ask this earlier but we just missed it um as a veteran you know there's not many people who have played this many seasons like you have what is giving you this that ability to sort of stay competitive stay driven when there's so many other different things that you could have done it's got to be the shaving cream <laughs> nah, nah. Yo, the young looks keep the reaction times young nah, I'm just playing. but um honestly i think it's just like your love for competition because with call of duty you're gonna love some games you're gonna hate some games we've all yeah. been there as competitive players as fans mm -hmm. of the franchise uh it's just the love of competition and it goes up and down like you're not always gonna want to go your hardest and be the best in the world every single day like there's going to be times where you're kind of focused on other things a little bit more. You kind of get distracted. Um, but luckily I've been able to keep that at a minimum throughout my career and just really focus on my craft. And 
I haven't had the, I've had seasons where like my team's been great. We've had a lot of success. I've had other seasons that have been tough, but I feel like those tough seasons have kind of given me that fire to want to bounce back, mm -hmm. improve, and see and just like get back to like the top and in those top echelon of players especially as you're getting older because like everyone starts talking about your age if you yeah. had last year i played really well statistically the team didn't play that well so everyone was on my ass and now mm -hmm. like this year don't have like i pro i don't have like the best as like high point nine one point oh whatever but we have a couple better placings so it's mm -hmm. like i'd much rather just have the better placings the more success and um it's just all about just winning at the end of the day and just keeping that competitive drive but yeah definitely once you get kicked down the only thing on your mind is getting back up and seeing how you can get back out there. And that's kind of just is like been the theme throughout my whole career, like have a bad year. Uh, and then whether it's a team or in, as an individual and then mm -hmm. want to bounce back and keep it going. And then my, just my love for call of duty as well. I just grew up playing this game. So I don't know what I would be doing if I wasn't playing call of duty. Yeah. So talking about teams that are knocked down and now have to get backed up. Let's talk about a couple of teams at Major Five who really didn't have the performance that we thought they were. The we had some whoppers, work, brother. Yeah, the number one team we got to ask to start off is Optic Texas, bro. They go flawless back to back stages. They go in and everybody's thinking, oh, they got black. I thought they blacks, were going to dominate. Like they yeah. were going to be good all the way to a top three. And then they don't win a single map, bro. Like, yeah. what do you think of their performance? I know you're still competing against them. You don't want to give these guys any gas or anything like that, but like, I know that shit had to catch you off guard the way. It well, he would have played them winners round yeah. two, so it shaked up quite nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was funny before that event because um, when I got back in the lineup, my teammates were telling me because we played Optic in a scrim, we played like pretty well versus them. Actually, like our third or fourth day, we played pretty well, and mm -hmm. then we're playing Florida next, and my teammates were like, "Yo, Florida's godlike now." Okay? <laughs> I was like, I haven't been away for that long. Florida's got like now. But then we them, and like, they were playing really well in scrims. I've even seen like other teams and players give them props. Like I think New York gave them props as well. Like Sender said like, yo, they started really to get it together at the end. But, like Florida was a team that like we knew was like a solid team. And if they catch fire and have the momentum, they could just keep it rolling. Mm. And I, they just kind of caught optic starting out slow and then just kept it rolling on the map one into map two and the map three. Um, Cause once like capsule and Vickle are just flying around in your face and they were playing so fast at such a good oh, pace. Yeah. At when they were rolling, it was hard to stop them. So you just couldn't let them get started. You just had to keep them off balance the whole time and make them uncomfortable. But I mean, they just came out hot and um, dominated in that map one and kept it going. So like, I know we all expected optic to make a deep run in this tournament. They got yeah. second, second went five and mm -hmm. zero in both online stages. So they were looking like the best team in the game. Um, but then sometimes that's just call of duty, especially in the new games nowadays with dynamic aim assist. Uh, all all the, shit, all man. The, yeah, all but they'll like, they'll like they'll going, shit can happen. <laughs> but they'll going on six. Like, do you, how do you bounce back in the next tournament? Like being champs, that yeah, is so champs, difficult. Like, um, for Optic, like it's hard to gauge what they're going to be able to do at this next tournament, yeah. uh, because yeah, of yeah. what happened. Oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was, I was just saying because say, of what happened, yeah. No, it's it's definitely tough, but I mean, with players like that, I mean, Shotzi's multi mm -hmm. FPS champion, uh -huh. Hukes champion, been around for a long time, Dashy, we know Dashy. OC has been like kind of like their IGO, even though he is like the new rookie. I mean, I think they're still young, have the fire. Like they're going to, they know they messed up. Everyone knows they messed up. So they're just going to yeah. buckle down. And I don't think those like, those players are going to be like, oh, dude, we did bad at one tournament. It's chalked. Like they just got to drop Damon behind them. Yeah. <laughs> I got to drop him. That was, <laughs> that was, that was hilarious. Like Damon walks out just like, hands you know, out, just to hype the crowd up. Yeah. And then they just get 3 0. And everyone's just like, what Damn. the fuck? What did he do? <laughs> what the hell did yo, Tom do? Yo, but like, that leads us into the next one. So, Boston Breach, obviously, you guys sent these guys into a portal, bro. Cause they, yeah, bro. <laughs> do you guys beat boston uh it, things don't go their way they go down and they lose to the london royal ravens like just wow. full-on crumble uh honestly the crumble started in that game five like against you guys they were throwing lives away jumping at you guys you know winning that yeah. they lose to Ray ravens and then they make a roster change and bring in snoopy um so me and jay had the pleasure of talking to censor on the podcast and he broke down snoopy uh and said he is basically shotzi's movement with a bz shot and that he will be at champs and he will be dominant. Have you had the pleasure of watching Snoopy play? And if so, what are your thoughts on him as a competitor? I've watched him a little bit, not 
the most i really only watched him in the search because i think i was watching him when they were playing at the challengers uh in major five tournament so but he looked like really good like he was playing his life really well he looks gross has really yeah. good movement has a really good shot so he looks gross a new 18 year old cracked smg player so he looks really good um <laughs> Why do you say it like that? <laughs> Why do you say it like that? Like a new 18 year old cracked SMG player. <laughs> I mean, I, I, there's, there's like a couple on the market every like every year. There's like one or two that come out of nowhere and start frying. So, Yo, uh, Dill I mean, hates just, being an AR, bro. Yeah, he's like, come on, man, give me back. No, but <laughs> continue. Sorry for interrupting. No, I, was, I was just going to say, like, he's just in a tough spot with, like, I, I don't know. There's a lot of changing parts in the Boston Breach yeah. camp. But um, it's a great opportunity for him. Like, it's either going to be a fantastic roster move if they do well, or mm -hmm. everyone's going to be like, oh, why'd they do that if they do bad? But, I mean, I think when you're in his shoes, like, if you get offered to play at Champs, play on the main stage. Yeah, you it. take that. You have to take yo, that. but Buddy is going from playing. Yo, he's playing. Gotta, go ahead, Jay. <laughs> you just got to go from playing against. Pander? You know, all the challenging players and then waking up having to play optic your very first main stage. Yo. Like, that's hey. crazy. Hey, that it's, is it's insane. A, it's like, what? Just well, that, you know what that's like, fire, right? right? Rookie Tom? Rookie Tom? Well, like, yeah, he, he you know, loved that because you, you played optic you know champs, like. right? So you were, and you were 18, right? Yeah, 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 I played them, but I, I played them a little bit before that. The first time I yeah. played optic was when I got my first top eight placing at UMG Philly. Oh. Uh, when we beat him for top eight, it was like scum, nade shot. I think ricky and big timer and and big timer yeah, yeah big timer retired after that and then scump left optic to join envy yeah for a week event. that was crazy yeah. that was yeah, that was a whole crazy week and Wait. only the kato g's are gonna remember that but um it's definitely crazy to play optic but you could you, you, like you rise to the occasion mm -hmm. or you, you you just don't rise at all so, i don't even like, know what he looks like bro <laughs> no nah, i know what he looks like good kid man he's straight from mexico too it's the crazy yeah, part yeah, bro he's I, only 18 years old I met him Sunday night um, and I was talking to him for a while. Like, he seemed like a really cool kid. Uh, and of course, he's just, he's good at Call of Duty. So, like, yeah. it could be like if they make a run, it could be one of the craziest stories ever. Never played a pro match before. First match is COD Champs versus the <laughs> biggest team in the game. Like, if he just comes out and fries, I mean, it's that's epic. Be a yeah. crazy story. What but advice hey, would you give him, though? Because yeah, you were in this exactly situation, no, Dill. Like, you, like, Dill, like, realistically, like, if we're talking about. 18 year old at champs turning up like you are that was you so what advice would you give to to guys in that situation snoopy i guess i mean you just gotta go in there with full confidence thinking you could do no wrong because if you over if you start overthinking it's gonna mess you up so like mm -hmm. go in there play your game it's it's the same guy i would say it's the same game you practice the same maps the same game types thousands of times yeah nothing changes it's just it might be a little bit of a louder crowd and you're on main stage. But other than that, it's the same game. Play the same way, be confident, make those plays. And uh, more often than not, if you're the one making the plays on the map, like you're gonna come out on top. You know, if you oh. were in, like, if you were the other guys on Boston, like if, the, if you were in that situation, how would you feel about bringing in like a, a young player like that? Like, For would, one event, would For you the be, biggest event of the year, bro. Yeah, like, would you be worried? I'm not asking you to tell me if you think the move was right or wrong. I'm just saying, if you made that decision, you're part of the team. How would you feel, man? That that would have to be pretty terrifying. Like, I don't think I could do that myself. I'd be like, no, nah, Nero, get your ass in here. Like, we're playing this tournament with you. I think you just kind of, you have to make him feel as comfortable as you can. Let him play his game and just let him become, because that's like your new superstar, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If he fries and goes off, you have a very good chance of winning. So like, Because he's going to get gassed, do, bro. Exactly. Because like, he's just going to be straight confidence. Like, if he yeah. gets a really bad map one, it might hurt his confidence a little bit. So you just need him to be as confident as possible, running around, popping three pieces, and just doing whatever he wants, and you're setting him up for that. That's I would just tell him, you have the green light, do whatever the fuck you want. Don't <laughs> block spawns. We'll figure it out for you. Just go pop a three-piece. Yeah. That's what I tell him. That. Um, Dill, so... You don't have time to, like, I was going to say, you just don't have time to, like, really get on point like the teamwork and yeah just go like do your thing weeks. that's what i would it's say two too weeks trust yourself go do your thing we'll figure it out um so do obviously last year you didn't make it the champs this year and you're in champs i want to ask you about like your thoughts on the format because now bro you win two mat you win three matches you're in the grand finals yeah, um crazy. how do you approach this like are you guys like heavily researching around one i assume but are you like planning like researching heavily into the optic game as well or like on all the teams like what is preparation like obviously i've never played in a champs with this format so i can't even imagine uh, how intense it must be as practice ramps up these next two weeks for it so talk to me a little bit about that 
Yeah, it's really interesting that like you know who you're playing for weeks in advance. Yeah, so you, kinda, you can prep for them, but you don't want to get too lost on prepping for one team because like, yeah, you and that will match great. There are still other teams you got to play in the tournament. Yep. So I think you practice on and for us, like we're still such a new, we've been a team for like, I think we just officially hit two weeks like three days ago. So <laughs> we're still a new team figuring out what we got to do. So we're going to like we're trying to figure out like our foundation, our base and then build off that. And then when it gets closer to like the match time, we'll see like their tendencies, what maps they like to play, what they like to do, how we think we could shut them down or exploit certain strategies of theirs. Mm -hmm. But for now, it's just building our own team foundation and teamwork because we still got to figure our stuff out. Like mm -hmm. we're nowhere near where we need to be as a team yet uh, across all modes. Like in search, when we're playing it this past weekend, it's still like, yo, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, you do this. Like we're making strats up on the fly on mm -hmm. stage. So like we still have a lot to like figure out and then we can kind of start throwing out like our little Wait. tricks like okay now we can kind of counter them here or play like this wait bro how the hell do y'all practice search before champs because i remember what, what we do, what we used to do and you know this you would like boot camp against the team or like mm -hmm. you would grind s and d uh prior to it in like 2ks tournaments like that right it's like now yeah. though like you can't go and scrim another team <laughs> i guess you can but it's like yeah. people aren't gonna take that fully serious even if they say they yeah. are yeah, yeah, unless you're throwing catch up. If, unless you guys are throwing yeah. catch up in these S and D ones. The only way you're gonna practice for champs or search, practice search for champs, is if you play a team on the other side of the bracket and you put up cash. That's the only way you're gonna yep. play like a yeah. team in search. We actually played search today versus a challengers team, and they have the LCQ tomorrow. Oh and shit! Obviously, it's online COD. Mm. Sound EQ is still allowed, so we we're playing yeah. search. We all have sound Jeez. EQ off because, like, yeah. we're trying to not use that. Obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't use it on main stage, but they're all using sound EQ, so it's like it's toxic, we're bro. literally trying to practice search that we're not even playing because sound EQ yeah. search and normal search on land is com a two completely different things. Yeah, way yeah. different. So it's like we gotta beg the challengers teams to not use sound EQ, but they kind of have to, because they're going to use sound EQ. Yeah. The qualifiers and at champs, I believe they can still use it on land. Really? Um, well, that's, I that's think, dumb. Crazy. I think that's that, crazy. I think you can, because I but think if you play with it all year, you might as well yeah. not switch it up for the final one. You know I what I'm saying? Don't quote me on that. They might not be able to, I don't know for mm. sure, but I know like mm. online, all the challengers use it because they just have to. Yeah. You try to disadvantage if you don't, but like, it's not easy to practice for search. I think what we're going to have to do is really just go over the strats we want to do kind of have some counter strats for like when we play new york or when we play mm -hmm. the other teams but like play our game going with the game plan and then adjust depending on what we're seeing in the maps like on the fly like okay we're seeing a player play over here a lot mm -hmm. let's bully this guy out or we see him over here let's stack this other side of the map and try and get the bomb down yeah quick. like just having an overall good understanding of our game plan because if our game plan's good we can we don't need to like counter them we can just stick to our game focus plan. on your own stuff yeah and yeah. you can adjust make adjustments i, I like it that for the whole tournament not just yeah okay we know exactly what new york does all rounds okay great we beat new york what the fuck does optic do now yeah yeah and we're just like we're still stuck on we just hard counter new york so hard we don't even have a game plan like yeah you don't have time to figure out oh well, let's just hard counter all the optic yep. you got like yeah you got like a couple like two three hours at night one before night the match. like so you need your own understanding your own plays and then you kind of make adjustments based on who you're playing awesome so yeah so d so you guys right now obviously we're at champs mode like you guys are only scrimming the teams on the opposite side of the bracket so you're only probably playing a maximum three to four pro teams and i heard you say that you're scrimming at least search and destroy versus challenger squads when you're playing these challenges, something you're still playing them in respawn. Is there a couple of things no, that you see from no. that gameplay that you're gonna bring, or is it just search and destroy? Just search and destroy uh, versus them. Um, it's just it, respawn would be different versus them too, because they're gonna be using sound EQ. EQ. Yeah, and yeah, sound yeah. EQ yep. respawn is like, yo, don't Terrible. call out. Shh. And yeah, you can't even communicate. You, off, you can't make plays. You play yeah, off your audio. Yeah. Like you just like okay. Dude, I hate sound like, EQ, bro. It's not you don't use teamwork. You use your ears in mm -hmm. uh, online and online Call of Duty with sound EQ um so we just play respawns versus the pro teams and like there's luckily like we have good teams on our side of the bracket but then you have like surge phase yeah like, surge phase. oh yeah so there's a lot of good like respawn and like well-rounded teams on the other side so i feel like we're just gonna get really good practice um going in and that's gonna help us a lot yeah that's we good played phase the past two days oh i didn't I mean, even think about that dill really fucking good so like yeah. it's, it's good to practice versus like the best team in the game so yeah, oh, so naturally you get to scrim against those teams. That's basically how everybody's yeah. doing it, right? So wow, that actually works out quite wonderfully for you guys. And you just played New York, so uh, we'll see yeah. how, how the rematch goes on. Uh, but I wanted to ask you sort of about the, the rest of the league landscape. We got a couple of topics here. Um, who do you think has been the most improved player this year of all the players in the league? 
from last year to this year, I guess you could say. Yeah, last Most year, this year. Improved. Yeah, it's a hard one, bro. I don't yeah, even know who I would say for that. Uh, maybe, well, I want to just say like Slasher, but he's also on phase. So yeah, like, maybe he's yeah. on Atlanta. <laughs> <phase. laughs> like, Austin's been playing really well. He played really well at the last tournament, um, and he's been having top placings all year, but he is on phase with, like, the best trio in the game. But Austin, or Slasher's been playing really well this year compared to last year because, like, his team was kind of struggling last year except for that one crazy Volk event. Mm -hmm. Who else improved from last year? I mean, Kismet did a oh, little bit. Oh, wait. Well, yeah, Kismet. Because Kismet got brought into the league middle last year, and mm -hmm. he's still disgusting at this disgusting. game. Disgusting. Like, when him and when Kismet and Hydra are on point, they're very hard to beat because like they're both just playing so fast making so many plays and then of course you still have priest and scribes who are great but like when your smgs are controlling the game it's so hard so like yeah i'd say kismet but he was also really good last year but he's been like lights out this year as well so like yeah kismet, he's got an mvp this year too yeah he's yeah. got an mvp as well so i think yeah, no, i, I think honestly shotzi got a lot better too low-key from last year i think he had a little bit of a dip last year and this year he's been unreal yeah. these last couple of events yeah. um it's, All right, so Kismet's the final answer. To that. Is there anybody else you I want to throw Kismet. into that one? I'm trying to think. I just can't. It's hard to like. <laughs> it's hard. I don't know. All yeah, right. This is a little hard question. All right, Jay, I'll let you do the next one. All right, so D, this is a question. Obviously, it's been asked all year. And as we get to the end of the year, this is one of those topics that we're all really curious about. It, it does look pretty locked in my mind, but I'm curious to see where you are. Who do you think right now is the rookie of the year? Like, who's the debate between and like, Who's in the lead? The debate has to be between Scrappy and Ghosty. But what if like, is, but what who? if fame wins champs? Well, isn't it just rookie of the year? Isn't like, excuse me, like regular? Like, I don't know how they do it. Is it just regular season? Oh, this, the whole thing. Whole yeah, it counts the whole, the whole thing. MVP is regular season. But then okay. the rookie of the year is the rookie, like who does the best throughout the whole year. Because now I when mean, you look at it, like fame got T3. And if he won champs, he you think he'd be in the discussion? Yeah, because he would have got six T three first. Um, right, that's godlike. In the discussion, but the thing is, like Scrappy's been playing lights out all year, and he won an event. So mm -hmm. like, his stats are really good. He has good placements to back it up as well. So I feel like mm -hmm. Scrappy is like, right now the MVP or the Rookie of the Year. Um, Ghosty was there too, but his last with, placing with the, hurts. With the role Ghosty plays, too, like he's not really gonna shine too often because like he's yeah. dashy and shotsy on his team. Like yeah, and then Huke. So like Ghosty fries and has his maps, but like when he's not really supposed, he's not there on optic to be a slayer. Uh, drop, drop the one point three superstar. He's yeah. there to like yeah. kind of control the pace of the game, call mm -hmm. out, do the dirty work, sit in the hill. That's why he calls himself the hill kitten. But uh, <laughs> he's he's been playing really well. But I think scrap just because his statistics and his placings. I agree. Have been but pretty damn good. So. If if he were to have, if optic were to have got to a finals again, even if they lost, it'd be an argument though. Yeah, like, oh, it, yeah. it really would. A lot closer. Do you, think it, do you think if Optic, like say it's Optic Toronto, well, I guess Scrap did beat Optic for his chip too, which yeah, did. does not help the case. Anyone yeah. MVP, right? So so yeah. Optic would need to win champs, I think, in order for it to be think, an argument. I think Ghosty would have to like win champs and like be the MVP. Cause like, yeah, be like Scrap, 1. yeah, he'd have to go crazy. Scrap has his MVP, great, played great all year, won the tur won a tournament, and then has like a, probably some other like third, fourth placements as well. Yeah, like, he's so good. Pretty consistent placements throughout the whole season. So I think it just has to be like Scrappy. Um. All right, Jay, you want to take the next one? Yeah. So the next one is talking about like obviously MVPs for certain stages for all these different events throughout the year. But what about for the entire season, man? Now, obviously, this is the bait. It's going down to a final finish. It's going to be a great ending to see how it goes. So many people have so many different names, but I'm curious to see who you got as like the MVP of the regular season. I think I would probably give it to Hydra. <laughs> have you, have you, yeah, no, I, I, I have Hydra as the MVP too, but I do see the the hard argument for Abizi. Top three no, every no. tournament, top three every yeah. tournament, and like a couple of those, he was the man. Yeah, and yeah. also they have a championship. So then you look at Hydra's and it's like, he has two championships, but they also have a sixth place and a 12th place, right? Mm -hmm, uh, yeah. And and this is the, an important uh, factor. At the first tournament, he wasn't the MVP on his team. Kismet was. Kids, yeah, yeah. So there is an argument, right? Like, yeah. um, 
but I, dude, to me, I'll always value the championships. I don't know though, man. It's gonna come down to it. It they might be fifty fifty in votes. No, it's super close. Um, I mean, I think because MVP usually goes to like the most impactful player, the most impactful player for their team. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. When you when you compare the teams on paper for the season, if you're telling me Hydra is gonna win two events and still do really well like you're probably thinking phase is going to do better throughout the season right oh they yeah like yeah sell him they have some of the greatest call of duty players of all time on their team who've been running shit the past couple of years but like with hydra you have like kismet priest of skies who like are really fucking good players mm -hmm. but like you probably didn't think new york no one really thought new york's winning two events this year and mm -hmm. would win the would be the only team to win two events in the regular season mm -hmm. and so i think it just makes hydra a little bit more impactful i think he might have a little bit better stats as well but I just think he does, he has to do more for his team compared to a BZ, where like he has three, two other superstars on the team, like and Sip and Selling. I mean, so, you could say that, but ways, you could but say that, know. but like he does a lot for his team too, though. You know what I'm saying? So oh, it's, yeah, it's kind of hard. That's why he's in the MVP race. So why, like, is, yeah. why is Scrap not in this discussion, you think? Because he's, um, if you look at it, he's uh, top five overall KD. Uh, his damage is through the roof. I think he's, I'll start right now. His damage and hardpoint, he's number one. Uh, he's amazing when it comes to first bloods in terms of against the rest of the ARs. So, like, statistics-wise, he's insane. He's also, he's number one in hardpoint yeah. and control damage, Dill, and, no, and number five in KD. So how is he not in this discussion with the first place and multiple T4s? I think the only thing you'd be able to really say is... With an AR, it's in this game, it's gonna be a lot harder to like shine, I guess, and be impactful. Like, yes, he's get doing great damage, making amazing plays, playing great, but like with you just can't run around and be too flashy and like be that impactful on the map. Like you can't get entries, you can't pop two pieces, like running into like a teammate's base with attack like you can with the sub. And um crap has been one of the best, if not the best, AR this whole season, but I think you're just a, a great SMG is more impactful than a great AR mm -hmm. with the way Call of Duty's are nowadays. And that's why I think, and I think it's a little bit harder to run, be a top SMG compared to being a super top AR in my well, opinion. Well, I mean, it's a relative to what you're, I mean, rel like to the role you have. I mean, that's the role that yeah, he has. True. So there's only so much he can really do, right? And mm -hmm. he's exceeding yeah. all expectations. I think that people maybe have forgotten what he's done in the season. I think he should be in that discussion. I don't think it's just them two. Yeah. I think it's those three low key i could be yeah, faded though we'll see what the comments say nah, i mean he's, he's up there because i mean i think he's for sure rookie of the year he definitely could be mvp like it's just everyone's gonna have a different take on it it's so hard to, to figure out i don't mm -hmm. know you, you know who's a guy who i feel like has slept i mean like slipped off of that list who i always thought was unbelievable at the game and i still do think he is is pred like well, i mean I their team yeah one of those SMG. yeah now obviously his team yeah. isn't in the best shape but like he still has statistically like one of the best seasons out of any player that we've ever seen too. So like, yeah. I don't know. It's obviously the succession of the team. If you're not winning, you ain't getting none. Yeah, that's kind of like me last year. I had all the numbers to back everything all you up. You were frying, bro. I yep. just didn't have the, I didn't have the, like the places. Hey. I think I hardest placing with eighth. So you were like, out there banging your teammates, though. That's unbelievable. Oh, yeah, 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 I was banging my teammates. <laughs> just having the most damage and killing everyone. You know what's no crazy, Dill? Is you're that's getting it. roasted for dropping 1.3s and baiting your teammates. And then you take the backseat and you start getting roasted again. Like, you can't win. <laughs> what do you want me to do, y'all? Hey, listen, okay. we got a couple Top, we got a couple top three placings, so like, fuck it. I'll get roasted and take the uh, take it. There we go. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> All right, so we just hit the hour mark, so it is now officially time for the friendly fire segment. This is where we ask you a couple of either ors. They're gonna get clipped, and you got, <laughs> and you gotta tell us who you're taking in their prime form. Okay, so uh, I'll do the first three, Jay, and then you do the last four. That okay, sound good. Yeah. All right, so prime crim six, prime clayster. Who you taking and why? Ooh. I'd say Prime Crim, just because when he was running a sub in like what Black Ops Two Ghost, and he would kind of like flex a little bit, but I think he was majority mo most of the time a sub. Like he was just by far the best player in the game in multiple titles. Whoa, you talking about wow. your champs duo championship? <laughs> That's crazy. And you're taking Listen, Porter? Like, I mean, uh, Clay is the goat. Clay's one of the best Call of Duty players of all time. A legend. Who, the crazy thing is, yo, Dill said that with like, no remorse. He didn't even smiled. Yeah, he said Ghost <laughs> like Ghost was a four sub machine guns. Everybody was forced to run a sub. Like, he was basically just talking about Crim and Black Ops too. Like he was a demon with that SMG, bro. I'll definitely take him. 
<laughs> that's crazy. No, I mean, I'm taking Krim too. I just thought you would pick Clay. All right, all right. All right, next one. I thought these were two good ones to put next to each other. Prime J-Cap or Prime Draza? What would J-Cap's prime be? Maybe Black Ops 1? He's throwing stuns somewhere, uh, Black Ops 1, are we talking yeah. about, are we, are we, Or are we talking about cap. his... Are we talking about his like getting the finals every jetpack era? Hey, I think Prime J Cap yeah, is do, probably bro. it probably yeah. is like BO one, but let's just for the argument's sake, let's say um Whoa well, damn, yeah. It's gotta be BO one, bro. We're talking about headband cap. Like headband. Yeah, it has headband to be because he, he sort of became a role player literally right yeah. after BO one. <laughs> I think I think yeah, I think I gotta just go with J Cap though, because what he brings to a team. Mm -hmm. He is such a smart Call of Duty player. Mm -hmm. And of course, like yeah, like later on in his career he had his moments where he would like, get fried on certain maps, <laughs> but like he was so fucking smart and like so good that like if he was in his prime and he's smart as fuck, like he might he, be the best player in the world. Ever, yeah. Dude, he was hella hard to play against. He was basically yeah. just like he was like Diet Rambo at that time, but he just had better gunny. <laughs> Not as smart, not as smart, but he just like let his team let his team do what they wanted yeah. simultaneously you know, while being that guy. Lot. He taught me a yeah. lot. So, like, I mean, me too. Yeah, when I team with him too, he's just toxic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we used to go to war. Him and I used to go to war back in the day after I got finished with high school. Yeah, dude. All right, next one: prime scrap or prime temp? Prime scrap or prime? So this like, year's scrap, and then prime temp would probably be scrap? what? Bo four. Bo four. He was yeah, godlike. Yeah, um, I, Twice Donnie Tim. Yeah, Donnie was Bobby nice. He's really good. I, I think I think I go with scrap though. I think I go with scrap just because he's been frying and uh his team's been like consistent the whole year. Like Donnie was fried at the beginning of Black Ops 4, but then his team kind of like just started yeah, like collapsing well. after. But like scrap's team's been like pretty consistent throughout the whole year and he's still been frying the whole year. So I'll probably take scrap. Don got finessed by the 5v5 cheese, bro. Yeah, he did, bro. <clears throat> if that was 4v4, that team, that Swice team, I think, would have won in a bit. Yeah, that would have been, oh, yeah. been solid. All right, Jay. You All up, right. brother. All right, Dale. Next up, bro. Prime time. Who you got? Hydra or Shotzi? <laughs> Ooh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think I'm going Hydra with this one. Oh. He is, that I'm man is Hydra. diff. That guy is think, different. But remember, Shotzi's like a watch, world champion, though. Oh, he and is, he's he different, too. <clears throat> he is. I mean, they both probably have my two favorite point of views to watch mm -hmm. in the game because like, it's just so fun to watch them both. Mm -hmm. I just think Hydra, when you watch him, like, he's just, he's so... The way he finesses his life it's is insane, just so bro. smart. Mm -hmm. And, like, he just is always on point with it. So, I think I'm going Hydra with that. That one's super close. That's, that's hard. But, you know, that's I'll, bro. I'll show some love to the French phenom. <laughs> Bro, there was a clip of him finessing his life on uh, Mercado when he was in front of Tin, and he was just like getting a kill, laying down the snake in the corner, getting a kill, jumping. Like, dude, he is insane. Like the Damn. way he moves around the map. Like, hit, I think the only person comparable in their movement to Shotzi is Hydra, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, and he he has yeah. sneaky, nasty movement. He really mm -hmm. does. Um, oh yeah, Jay, go ahead, sir. <laughs> All right, next up, next up, dude. Prime time. Who you got, Pred or Slacked? It's a good one, right? It's a good Prime one. Slack. <laughs> it's Ooh, Prime Slack was nice. <laughs> JV was gross. Like, they're kind of like different players in a way. They are. They oh, are. I, feel like I mean, Pre Pre was Pre a slayer. Like a superstar. Yeah. And like Slack wasn't really ever like a slayer. Like well, he, he kind of was. He was, was. Like he was like a kind of. He was a he he was slay, but he was also like objective oriented. Uh -huh. I guess in a yep. way. I don't yep. know. Well, he was he was better at like winning, right? Yeah, well, yeah, he won in what so many different titles. Mm -hmm. Yep, and he was like behind the optic. I think he had the highest placing average behind like the optic dynasty after like the jetpack games or something. I so, mean, like, you could definitely argue Slack had as much win. skill as Pred. You could definitely argue that at his peak. Yeah. Okay, know, so who you said taking? Probably Black Ops. Who am I taking? Who you taking, bro? Like Slack got mad chips. Like Pred got one. But over time, we're like prime plane over not like counting. Chips. Yeah, just their prime, yeah, like, like the best like, version yeah, like, of either you, one. Yeah, like who you taking, bro? Like, I think I would think who you want to be side by side ready for war with you. I think Pred just has more takeover potential, mm. but Jerry's like such a good teammate, like he's such a well rounded teammate and like a winner. I don't know, it's hard to say, but if you want someone to play, if you have to play one map, life or death, and you need someone to pop off, I think you could go with Pred. Fair, you go with Pred there. All right, all right. We're taking get Pred in the game five, even though they didn't really have a lot of success and shit. All good though. 
Next up, D. Next up, we got a BZ prime time versus the King Scump. Who you got? Oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> <laughs> this is tough. You're trying to set me up with the green wall. So this will be <laughs> AW Scump versus Honestly, Cold a War ABZ. Different any title, dude. Yeah, wait, yeah. wait, which ABZ you think it was a BL4 ABZ or Cold, Cold War ABZ? Um, I, I think Cold a lot of ABZ. Cold War. Like, BZ, even cool, this year, bro. Major three, major four. Dude, BZ he is like, stiff, God, bro. Yeah. Nah, nah, he's crazy. He just sprints bro. at you and just has crazy. He said, I'm gun. here. I mean, you can't yeah, go wrong. AW gun. Scump was crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah, he was crazy too. I think. <sighs> Damn, that's tough. Because if you look at AW, Scump won all the chips with his mm -hmm. team, won like with nine out of 15 or nine out of 14 tournaments. And they both had um, God squads, so it's like... Mm -hmm. And then BZ, if you look at Cold War BZ, they won four to the six tournaments as well. Um, shit, that one's hard. But, you know, I got to show some love to the king. You know, I'm going to go scum. I'm going to go scum. I got to show some love, though, with the king. Yeah, it's, it's hard. Like, I feel like Seth and the hype and just AW, he was so nice. But BZ yeah. and Search and Destroy, that's the difference for me. Yeah, yeah, I think a BZ is, is better at search than Seth was like during that time. Mm -hmm. optic, that was like the one thing they kind of struggled was their search. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. their respawn was fucking so good. Unreal. Like, we were the only team in AW that could beat them. So, mm -hmm. like, and because we were just as good at them at respawn, and then our search was a little bit better than theirs. So that's why we could beat them. But, mm -hmm. like, I think the phase core team was just more well rounded. But this, the Optic and AW team was just their respawn was just so fucking lights out that like people just didn't really have a chance. And Wait, if, if they lost the search, it didn't matter. Who was the hardest player that you ever had to compete against, you think? This game might be a weird one, but probably it like AW Huke. Oh, yeah. Yep. Number oh, one. Tyler was out there flying. <laughs> Number Tyler one. Was he was cr like, he just had such good movement when he was flying in air, especially mm -hmm. like moving in gunny while flying mm -hmm. in air, which made him tough to play against. But then. More like players nowadays, I would say maybe like like Cold War Simp. Oh yeah. Cold War Simp would be easy. Cause that team, I was bro, when you were scrimming phase in Cold War, holy shit. Thank God I <laughs> retired. They wow. went to the same oh, places. God. They had assigned seats. They would go to the, <laughs> on the hills. You would know where they would be. They had the same people in the same places, but their teamwork. Their shots where everything was so good. They were so on point that, like, it didn't fucking matter. Like, on Garrison Hardpoint, oh, my God. They were a nightmare to play oh, against. Oh, I can't imagine, bro. They were not. But but I think Simp just ha is so aware. Like, you never just get a freebie on him. Like, you never just mm -hmm. are looking. He just he's bringing across the screen. And you just kill him. Like, he's always ready for you. So, like, I think probably, like, Cold War Simp was definitely up there. Um, Like, they're just so hard to play against because they're always ready. Like, even if you kill them, they're getting you one shot at least. Yeah. All right. We got, any, we got uh, one more. Uh, Oh, God. No, no, I got to follow up to that one. It's funny. Well, so for this year, is there any easy matchups for you, bro? Is there anyone out there? You sitting there like, oh, yeah, I can't wait Yo, to see you on the battlefield. Be careful to Juju. <laughs> well, he don't even got to be on. He don't even have to be at champs. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I don't know. I don't know who like we had our most success against as a team this year no, not not as a team just you individually bro. yeah when yeah, you're squaring up you're like map. i'm frying him i square up with you you on the heck glitch i'm delusionally challenging you bro because <laughs> i know who you are is there anybody like that like in the league right now for you to just like dude every time i play this guy i'm having him now nah, i respect everyone <laughs> <laughs> that's the right <laughs> answer that's the right <laughs> answer that's the killer we've all known one of them might be a chance and i don't want to lose it one v one or some crazy gunfight be like fuck it can't yeah <laughs> Fair um, enough. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Everyone's <laughs> fucking a beast at champ, so I got to be on my A game. And the team's that's, that's, a game. That's, that's the A game answer right there. Though. I expect nothing less out of you, consummate professional you are. All right, but last one, bro. Last one in the friendly fire segment. Who are you taking? Prompt time, slasher or octane? Ooh. <sighs> what game is Prime Sam? Yeah, what game is Prime Sam? I don't know, bro. That motherfucker reaped my shit for years. Yeah, huh? years. He's he been got like... He was, always, like, <laughs> he was always in like the top three AR. It was like him, yeah. Flash or Formal. I think mm -hmm. for what, like BO3 and onwards. BO3, mm -hmm. IW. Those games. Um, I think I'm, I'm going to take Prime Slasher, though. Hey! Prime Slasher. Let's go, like, Austin. You're the I first one who said that. that one. I mean, Austin, Austin was just really good in respawn. He's, of course, a fucking 
really good at search. Like Smart, yeah. you've seen him last year set a search record, this year set a search record with his teams. So like I think he's just um he's really good at search and that that's why I, put, I think puts him a little bit above Sam for me. It's just like the search and destroy play calls because they're both fucking gross and respawn and Sam's one of the best hill kittens of all time. And his <laughs> Sam's comms have just gotten to another oh, level. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sam's comms because I, I like Looney's our coach, so like he'd always say, "Bro, if Sam had comms like this when I team with him, he'd have <laughs> more turn Facts <laughs> though, yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah, no, Sam's comms are god like now. Yeah, both those guys are insane. Uh, uh, he does have a robotics engineering degree, so like that's that's pretty impressive. That yeah, guy forgot it. Yeah. He forgot all of that though. There's no way this guy <laughs> could build me a robot. Yeah, he's playing with FaZe. You don't even got to remember that shit. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, won, he won Black Ops 3 after graduating. So, like, you know, he got done with it and just won the last term of the year. He's so, like, dip he for that. Got to tip that. Got to tip that dedication to, like, finish college and then win a ring. Facts. Oh, yeah. All right, that uh that wraps up the friendly fire segment. Um, Dill, dude, attached. Thank you so much for joining, man. Um, thank you. Feel like I learned a lot about the season, and also now I'm <laughs> way more hyped to watch you guys uh, play at champs. Um, mm -hmm. Super excited to watch you back on the team. You guys had a lot of success, and then also uh, see what Fame is able to do. Like this is going to be a crazy ass tournament. I know you're going to give it give it your all. Obviously, after how last year went, so uh, anything can happen at champs, bro. You know, you know right. how it goes. So uh, good luck in yeah. preparation going forward, brother. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Yeah, D, you the man, man. Just to follow up real quick. Thank you for coming on. I wish you guys nothing but the best of luck at Champs. You know what I'm saying? You already did what you had to do to get there, but now it's time to, you know, make the people watch you again, Step brother. So done. Good luck. That one's Step done. done. We got to go there, take care of business, <laughs> polish up on everything, and come out as a different team. I'm not trying to see you at the that. tables on Saturday night, all right? I want to oh, see no, you. No, no. I, wanna, I don't want to see you at all. I want to see you Sunday on stage. I don't want to be going to this Saturday or Sunday and they be talking about some of your attaches on my on the on the desk for the second second. They ain't taking my spot. <laughs> I didn't see you playing, bro. All right, man. Yeah, good luck. But all right, guys, hey, listen. We gotta earn it. We gotta earn it. Listen, everybody watching, make sure you leave a like. All of attaches socials will be in the description below. Much love. Leave a five star. We'll see you guys in the next podcast. Peace. Peace. Peace.